so far we have seen cauchy riemann equations in cartesian form now let's see the cr equation in polar form always they will ask state and prove so we have to memorize the statement now see the statement if f of z is equal to f of r e power i theta that is equal to u of r comma i theta plus i into v of r comma theta is analytic at a point z then there exist four continuous first order partial derivatives del u by del r del u by del theta del v by del r comma del v by del theta and satisfy the equations what are those cr equations del u by del r is equal to 1 by r into del v by del theta or i can say this r u r is equal to v theta this r we are going taking to the other side similarly del v by del r is equal to minus 1 by r into del u by del theta this is what we have to prove this is cr equations in polar form if you have given a problem and if you are going to use cartesian or polar as i told you in the beginning you have to uh, find out that and then apply the equations accordingly and remember it was x comma y in cartesian now it is r comma theta in polar and the proof is similar to the cartesian proof how we will start that the function is analytic function and then we will use the concept of differentiation right same thing we are going to use let f of z be analytic at a point z is equal to r e power i theta and hence by definition f dash of z is equal to limit delta z tends to 0 f of z plus delta z minus f of z by delta z exist and it is unique okay so i am saying that the derivative exists and unique because the function is analytic okay so now i am saying in delta z there is a small increment since it's in polar form r and theta we have right so corresponding increments are del r and del theta in r and theta remember in polar we have written del x del y everything is similar okay so uh, if you are thorough with the uh, cartesian uh, proof then it's easy for you to solve it in polar and f dash of z is equal to we are applying the same thing limit delta z tends to 0 what is this function a function f is a combination of u and v so i am rewriting this function f in terms of u and v u of r plus delta r comma theta plus delta theta plus i into v of r plus delta r comma theta plus delta theta minus u of r comma theta plus i into v of r comma theta just replace this f by combination of u and v here delta plus delta z is there that is why r plus delta r and theta plus delta theta here simple f of z so i have substituted this as it is and denominator we have delta z okay so now what we did in cartesian we segregated the real and imaginary part same thing we are going to do what is the real part u of r comma r plus delta r comma theta plus delta theta and then on the other side minus u of r comma theta so i have written this divided by delta z what is the imaginary part imaginary part that contains i correct so v of r plus delta r comma theta plus delta theta this minus is common for both the terms so please be careful minus v of r comma theta by delta z so you have got real part plus i into imaginary part you are going to apply the limit remember what we did uh, case 1 when uh, delta x is equal to 0 and case 2 when delta y is equal to 0 in cartesian so what we are going to do in polar delta theta 0 and delta r 0 these two are the two cases and remember uh, we got delta z as delta x plus i into delta y in cartesian i am just comparing both the proofs so if you are thorough with that so it is the same so now here delta z is nothing but z with respect to r and increment in delta r plus z with respect to theta and a small increment in delta theta just you are going to substitute these values here so this is nothing but del by del r of r e power i theta into delta r plus del by del theta of r e power i theta into delta theta just i have replaced z by this z by r e power i theta and remember we are going to partially differentiate with respect to r here and partially differentiate with respect to theta here and always whenever i go for partial differentiation 
we have to treat the other value as constant. Here it's like if I'm differentiating with respect to r, so which is a constant, this e power i theta is constant. This is just like a number, 5 r, if I differentiate what I'll write, only 5. So same way I have written only e power i theta. And here, uh, differentiation of r is 1. So e power i theta into 1, this delta r I have written as it is. Second term, I am going to differentiate partially with respect to theta. So, which is a constant? R is a constant. So, this R is just a number for me. So, R into delta theta, I will write as it is. E power I theta, if I differentiate, I E power I theta. Because E power phi theta, if I differentiate what I will write, phi E power phi theta, same way. So, I E power I theta is a differentiation. So, if I write with respect to theta means, I will differentiate only the theta terms and other things are treated as constant. So, R is a constant. So, I have written that as it is. Now, delta Z is E power I theta into delta R plus I R into E power I theta into delta theta. Okay. So, now delta Z tends to 0 means there are two cases. One is delta theta is equal to 0. The other one is delta R is equal to 0. So, we are going to use case 1 and case 2. Finally, we are going to compare both the answers because as per analytic function, the function is differentiable. So, if the limit approaches through any point, the answer is going to be the same. Now, if you see here case 1, that is delta theta is equal to 0. So, what do you mean by that? Delta z is equal to e power i theta into delta r. Only the first term will come. Okay. So, delta z tends to 0 means e power i theta will not become 0. So, only possibility is delta r tends to 0. So, wherever uh, the values are there, you are going to replace. Limit delta r tends to 0. U of r plus delta r comma. What you had in that equation 1? Theta plus delta theta. Delta theta is 0. So, I am writing only theta. Minus u of r comma theta divided by we had delta z. What is that delta z in this case? e power i theta into delta r. I have written this. Plus i into limit delta r tends to 0. What is the second term? Uh, I am talking about equation 1. That is after segregating real and imaginary part, you are going to substitute these things in equation 1. V of r plus delta r. We have written that as it is. Comma. It was there theta plus delta theta. So, I have written only theta minus v of r comma theta similarly denominator e power i theta into delta r okay so now in this case it's very easy e power i theta and the denominator if it comes to the numerator e power minus i theta we have this we have taken it out so i'm measuring a small increment with respect to r denominator also r delta r tends to zero this is the basic definition of del u by del r Similarly, I am talking about a small increment in V with respect to R because R only R is increasing. See, R plus delta R, R. Theta is same. So, I am talking about only the increment or change in R. So, with respect to R, it is nothing but del V by del R. So, you are done with this. So, uh, now we have to go for case 2. That is, delta R is equal to 0. Same thing. So, uh, delta z was like a combination of r and theta, right? e power i theta into delta r. It was like that. Since delta r is 0, that term will become completely 0. Plus i r into e power i theta delta theta. So, I have written only the second term. And here, delta z tends to 0 means delta theta tends to 0. Because if this is 0, then other things cannot be 0. So, only delta theta will be 0. Okay. Now, I am going to again change equation 1 for this corresponding case. Remember what was equation 1? Yeah, now you can see this. In the beginning, we have substituted this and segregated real and imaginary part. This is the main equation. In this equation, if I substitute delta R 0, then in the first case, I will get R only. This will come as it is. Here also, I will get only R because delta R will become 0, other things as it is. Denominator delta z, I will replace by i r e power i theta. So, just we are substituting that value in this equation 1. So, we have substituted this. Uh, only we have r, other values as it is. Here also only we have r. 
denominator we have substituted i r e power i theta delta theta on both the sides. Now what are the things common? i r e power i theta is common so I have taken that outside. So we have limit delta theta tends to 0 this plus i into this we have written as it is. Now if you see this is a small increment of u r is the same only there is a small increment in theta so that is why I have written u with respect to theta this is a basic definition plus i into now where the increment in v is there only for theta r remains the same so I am it means I am partially differentiating v with respect to theta I am measuring the small change in theta so this is nothing but del v by del theta okay so now 1 by i r e power i theta is there outside right we are going to take that inside okay uh, r e power i theta is okay but this i will change what is the real part and imaginary part so if i take 1 by i inside to the first term what is 1 by i minus i so this term will become minus i into del u by del theta plus if you take i to the second term i is there in the denominator here i is there in the numerator actually it is not cancelling that i goes to the numerator it will become minus i minus i square it will become so it is plus 1 but you can uh, connect to that this i and i you can cancel you can think like that but do not cancel so second term will become del v by del theta ok so now that is what uh, the explanation given 1 by i is nothing but minus i Okay, second term this i and this i will get cancelled because 1 by i will become minus i so minus i square plus 1. So now you have got this answer that is f dash of z is equal to 1 by r e power i theta into minus i this 1 by i have written as minus i del u by del theta plus del v by del theta that is equal to e power minus i theta into minus i by r del u by del theta plus 1 by r del v by del theta ok. So we are taking this 1 by r inside now slowly leaving e power minus i theta outside why because in your first case e power minus i theta was there outside other things were there inside correct. So that is why you can take uh, at a stretch 1 by i r inside so you should not get confused with i term that is why first take i inside and then take r inside so that confusion won't be there. So now we are going to compare this answer and this answer as per differentiation concept if it is analytic these two answers should be the same. Now comparing the real and imaginary part we have this e power minus i theta and this e power minus i theta will get cancelled and we get real part del u by del r is equal to 1 by r del v by del theta this is the real part similarly what is the imaginary part the term that is along with i del v by del r is equal to del u uh, minus 1 by r del u by del theta leaving i whatever it is there we have to write so del v by del r is equal to minus 1 by r into del u by del theta which is nothing but r u r is equal to v theta and r v r is equal to minus u theta that is it so you are done with the proof and this is nothing but this uh, this r we are taking into the other side r u suffix r this is a notation for that this r I am taking it outside u suffix r so r u r is equal to v suffix theta so is equal to v theta and this r I am taking to the other side r v suffix r this is the notation del u by um, del v by del r and vr are same is equal to minus del u by del theta which is nothing but u theta. So thus we have got CR equations in polar form. So this is the proof uh, and it is same as CR equation Cartesian there is a very small proof also in case if you are finding tough to write that proof then you can go for this ok. So f of z is equal to u plus iv that is equal to f of in the place of z what I am going to substitute r e power i theta since it is in polar form. Now I am going to differentiate this equation partially with respect to r and then partially with respect to theta as simple as that ok. So 
I have written this equation u plus iv is equal to f of r e power i theta. Now, with respect to r means this will become del u by del r. Remember, this is a partial differentiation because u is a function of r and theta. So, do not write du by dr. Okay? Plus i into, again v is also a function of r and theta. So, del v by del r. Because we are partially differentiating with respect to r. This equation we are going to differentiate. So, del u by del r plus i e into del v by del r is equal to, we do not know what is this function. So, I am just writing derivative of that function. So, f dash of r e power i theta into, we are going to differentiate r e power i theta with respect to r. So, which is a constant? e power i theta is just a constant. So, e power i theta into r differentiation is 1. So, we will be getting only e power i theta. Similarly, we are going to differentiate this equation with respect to theta. So, what you will write? Del u by del theta plus i into del v by del theta. That is equal to f dash of r e power i theta into. Now, I am going to differentiate this term with respect to theta now. So, which is a constant? r is a constant. Hide that r and differentiate only the term along with that. What is that? e power i theta. e power i theta, if I differentiate what I will get? i e power i theta. Okay. So, the same line we are differentiating partially with respect to r and partially with respect to theta. Okay. r and theta is done. So, we have got two equations. Now, I am going to simplify this. r i, I have taken outside. i r into leftover terms I have written as it is f dash of r e power i theta into e power i theta. What is this? This is nothing but right hand side of this equation. This is same as this. So, whatever there inside the bracket I can replace with this. So, I have replaced. Now, after replacing again I repeat I have taken only i r outside. Leftover term is nothing but what we have got from equation 1. What is there on the other side? So, I am going to replace this by this. So, after replacing, I am getting this i r into del u by del r plus i into del v by del r. Now, I am equating the real part. If I equate the real part, what I will get? Del u by del theta, this is the real part over here. That is equal to, if I multiply i, first term will become real part. Sorry, imaginary part. i r into del u by del r because i is there, the first term will become imaginary. What will happen to the second term? i into i, i square value is minus 1, so there is no i here. So, minus 1 into, then this r goes inside, r into del v by del r. So, minus r into del v by del r, this is the real part. What is the imaginary part? It is nothing but del v by del theta, I have written this, is equal to, first term if I multiply inside, i r into del u by del r. This is a imaginary part, right? r into del u by del r. Whenever you are writing the imaginary part, do not write i, leaving i, whatever else is there in the coefficient, you write it. So, this is what you have to prove. r u r is equal to v theta. And this is r v r is equal to, push that minus side to the other side, r v r is equal to minus theta, u theta. And hence, you prove the CR equation. So, uh, you can go for the first proof because it is similar to Cartesian. In case if you are finding it tough, then you go for this short version.